This cafe's music doesn't sound good. Let's fix it. My friend Sergi, who manages the shop, wanted a pair of speakers that mapped the interior. And since we're on a budget, the best option was to customize an old set of speakers. The problem is that old speakers usually look like this. Lots of dark wood, dense, and dust. And we need them to look more like this. Which meant I'd be pushing my veneering skills to add a brighter wood on the exterior and also learning to 3D model so that I could learn to use a CNC to cut out those dope new grills. Back in high school, I didn't have that stick to itness and would dream up customizations or mods and rarely follow through with them. So learning these new skills and committing to this project is really exciting for me. On top of making them look the part, we wanted them to actually sound better than the mess of tinny surround sound speakers that were stuffed on top of this wooden ceiling structure. Now, I'm a pretty optimistic person, which is great, most of the time. Need an engine rebuilt? Sure, six hours. Want to dam the Mississippi? Give me a couple weeks. Want new speakers for your coffee shop? How about the end of next month? And that's what I said in June. But by the end of July, I had discovered that learning 3D modeling could be a real hair pulling experience. So to maintain some joy towards the project, I worked on other elements of the speakers, starting with improving the sound. And with them being nearly 50 years old, the electrical components have drifted out of spec, which degrades the sound quality. But thankfully, replacements are readily available. So I replaced the old capacitors and resistors and cleaned the tone control switches. More on that in my video titled, Best Update for Your Old Speakers. And yeah, even just one of them sounded better. It's, yeah, I think the sound was pretty good. At this point, it was the end of August and I was still working on the 3D model, but I did know that I would be fixing up the cabinets regardless of the final design. So I took a break to clean up the water damaged corners and edges on the speakers. This old particle board expands and falls apart when exposed to moisture. So I first sanded the edges flat, then pulled out all the loose particles. Once I was working with solid material, I started filling in the gaps with wood filler. This isn't the best method, but it's good enough. After the filler dried, I sanded the sides flat, then filled any remaining small holes with more wood filler. I repeated these steps a couple of times to make sure everything was perfect. And while you watch me sand and fill, sand and fill, you might be wondering if these speakers are even worth it. They're a pair of realistic Nova 8 speakers from Radio Shack in the 70s. They're not necessarily anything special, but they sound fine and they were mass produced, so I don't really feel bad completely altering them. As far as them being worth all of this effort, well, the wood veneer I'll be putting on them costs more than the 38 bucks I paid for the speakers, and the countless hours invested surely would be more than that. But the pure enjoyment that I get from taking something old and beat up and giving it a new life, that's priceless. Dude, I literally, I'm, I'm so excited. I've put so much effort into designing the way this speaker looks. I can't wait to make it actually exist in real life. I sent the design to Sergi for his approval. I'm finally getting around to modeling the speakers for narrative. So this is what we have so far. And he loved it. With new energy, I got to work CNCing those diamond pattern grills. But unbeknownst to me, this would become the most time consuming part of this build. My brother-in-law built his own CNC machine that utilizes a wood router and computer from a large scale 3D printer. And he was gracious enough to not only let me use it, but to help me set the cutting path for the design and tweak it over and over and over again. Thanks, Ben. The setup worked perfectly for a small test grill, but when we tried them at full size, I ran into all sorts of issues, with the biggest one being that the diamond pieces that it cut out had a tendency to get lifted up and jam the router, ruining not one, not two, not even three, but four grills. Over the next month, I spent 20 or more hours on more than 10 attempts to get the grill cut out, and was on the edge of giving up and paying a company to cut them when I finally got one completed. The moment of truth. Oh baby, look at that. I've been working on these speakers for like two and a half months. I've started to get a little discouraged. So the fact that I was able to come here today and get one grill cut out and I actually have time left in the day to cut another one is insane. Dude, look at this. Okay, it's almost all the way cut. Picking all these diamonds up out here and I've kind of gotten tired. You can see how these lines are significantly thicker. Basically, I picked one up and it got jammed at the back of the motor and kind of stopped it and it got it off track. I would have been out of here with two perfectly fine grills and instead I'm out of here with one grill and I have to go buy more plywood. That's how projects go though. While I waited for more plywood to arrive, I got back to work on the cabinets. 
I thought it would be cool if the grills attached with magnets instead of the screws that held the originals in place, but this also means that people might see them with the grills off, and the fronts weren't painted from the factory, and I think they're kind of ugly. So I set about filling and sanding smooth all of the imperfections in the surface, then I drilled a hole in each corner using a jig to space them all the same distance from the corner, and then I lowered magnets and wood filler into the holes. After a day, I came back and sanded the baffles smooth. I then painted them with multiple coats of satin white paint, sanding it smooth between each coat. The paint settled in pretty well. We just have, as you can see, a little bit of bumps there. So we're gonna try to smooth that stuff out and then put another layer of paint on and it didn't fill in the little gaps around the magnets and stuff. Another coat of paint fixed that problem and I'm really happy with how they turned out. All right, so after a lot of work, that scene seeing has been a pain, I have finally made it to the time where I actually veneer the first speaker. I'm using just tight bond glue on a roller. Basically, I roll two coats onto the back side of the veneer and onto the surface of the speaker, and then I use an iron to just adhere the veneer onto said speaker. In the past, I've only used paper-backed veneer, and this glue-up method worked great. But this time, I opted for using what's called 10 mil veneer, which is a thin layer of wood with no backing. It's more fragile to work with, but it's thicker than the paper-backed stuff, so it's more durable. And there's more types of wood available, so working with it is a skill I'd really like to acquire. Unfortunately, I didn't know that you're supposed to use a special tape to hold it together, so when it came time to iron it on, the seams started to separate. But alas, woodworking isn't a matter of doing things perfect, it's a matter of knowing how to fix your mistakes when you make them. So I matched some wood filler to the veneer and continued on with wrapping these old hunks in a new maple wood blanket. I didn't want the edges of the speaker to show white next to the new grill, so I even veneered the lip that sticks up from the front baffle. Around this time, my new material came in, and after a couple of attempts, I was able to get the second grill finished. Just have to cut out the last little bit. Trying to go slow and steady, because if this works, then that means I get to move forward on the speakers. Huh. Ooh. I think it's very usable. That's so exciting. Having the grills cut was such a huge weight off my shoulders, as now all I had left to do was sand the cabinets and the grills, apply a nice natural tone finish to both of them, wrap the grills in linen, attach a piece of steel and a magnet to each corner along with some felt, and finish them off with leather pull tabs. All right. The stain has carried up a little bit, the finish rather, the Rubio, so it's time to peel this off. This tape has been on here a while. It is quite secure. This moment of reinstalling the drivers and components and installing the grill was one I had been looking forward to for months. And seeing it now still brings me so much joy. This month long project ended up turning into a three and a half month long pursuit. And it was mid October when I brought them to Narrative Coffee to install and show them to Sergi for the first time. Pretty cool. <laughs> Dang. Dang. What a good job. Dude, that's wild. You get all the magnets all there. Dude, you clean these puppies up. Yeah, dude. That's awesome, dude. Oh, man. Amazing. <laughs> I'm excited. Let's Can get them in there, dude. Let's get them in there. All right, so this is what we're currently working with. This is. <laughs> this is this is what the cafe is run on, just a few a few piles. Let's go, let's splice, oh, there's dude. There's another speaker. There's another speaker, dude. It's around sound, dude. So careful, there's all kinds of things going on the ceiling. Wow, dude. <laughs> Matt, do you even know anything about sound? I don't even know anything oh. about sound. All right, so we got second speaker up on the shelf here, a little toe in, so the sound goes a little that way. All right, first song, sure. <laughs> It's crispy. It's clean. World's difference from from uh, those shouting. I mean, they were very shout. These are shouting. Shouty. Super shouty. <laughs> Just the whole time when you're listening to tunes. So it's not like a texture in. The, there's a texture in the air. Like literally. How about how's the mouth feel? The mouth feel. The mouth feel and the ear feel is really nice. It's soft.
Yeah. yeah. It fills the space so much better. Heck yeah. They sound sick, dude. I'm so pumped. The culmination of multiple months' work left me feeling a more direct tie to one of my favorite places in my hometown, as well as a sense of accomplishment that comes from pursuing something you love doing and seeing it work out. So if you're in the area, stop by Narrative, grab a drink, sit down, have a listen, and enjoy. Thanks for tuning in. P.S. Does anyone need any plywood diamonds? <laughs> I've got a couple.